Hey guys, Krista Jones here from Davey and Krista. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to blog a wedding, a portrait session, or really just do any kind of blog post in general. If we are blogging something that has a lot of images, we like to start by sizing those images and then uploading them to the post. And then we'll work on the rest of the post. So I'm going to show you my preferred way to do it. And then I'm going to show you another way that you can do it with Photoshop. Um, so historically, I've been a big fan of Blogstomp. Um, it's this great software that sizes your images and help, and then you can upload them to your website. They just rebranded to be called Storyteller, and they have a few other options built in now. The first one is to actually create a blog post and then have this upload to your WordPress site. And it works and it adds the images, but I've noticed that you can only edit the post with the Storyteller app. And I believe that in order to keep using this program in the long run, you need to keep paying for the program. And so I think in the future, if you continue to blog this way, it might limit your blog posts. And it also limits who can edit your blog posts because it just adds this like single line of text to your blog post in WordPress and everything else is going to be done in this app. And so it definitely makes blogging a little bit easier, but personally, I'm, I'm not a fan of that option. If I were you, what I would do is go to the collage setting. And so within that setting, you would drop in some images. So I'm going to add some images from a wedding that I shot a few years ago. So I am selecting a, just a, a handful of images right here so that I can show you how I would size them and optimize them for a blog post. I... When I blogged weddings, I didn't normally tell the full story of the day, especially if there were parts of the day where maybe the style of photography, because it was in a darker setting or maybe not an ideal setting, um, there were just parts of the day that I would skip um, because I wanted to make sure that whatever I was blogging always was representative of the kind of work that I wanted to create. So I'm probably selecting way too many images right now, but I just want to give you an idea. Like the reception was pretty dark. Um, I think we shot this in late fall and so it got dark pretty quickly. And so like this part of the day, I probably, I think I only blogged a few black and white photos from that part of the day. Um, I'm going to hit select files and then we'll see my images come in here. And it actually brought in some styles that I had used in Blogstomp, but I'll show you how to create those styles. So if you just click on this little icon right here, you can hit the plus sign. Um, and within here, you can set your image width so you can give it a name. So we could make this Krista 1200 because 1200 is kind of a good rule of thumb for uploading images to a website. Um, so let's see if I can get it closer to, there's 1201. Um, I am not a big fan of having borders around images. I like to have borders between images, like maybe 10 to 13 pixels wide. Um, I don't want to have strokes around the images. So I'm going to leave those as zero. I don't need a tab down at the bottom. So if you see me playing with this, that's going to go away. Sometimes people like to have their logo down here, but um, I was, I think I prefer more simple styles. Um, and this is just showing you what it would look like if you had five images selected. It, it's going to size it for three. It's going to carry it over for two images and so forth. So corners are good to make sure that things aren't uploading too large to my website. Um, you could upload a logo if you want, but I'm, again, I'm not a big fan of that. And so then I would just hit, okay. And then I have my style in here. So what I can do now is I can just start selecting images and add them to my site. So if I wanted to upload this one as a big vertical, um, or I wanted to select two, I could do that. So I might start by selecting one big vertical here and then hitting create. And then next I might jump into some getting ready photos. So I might select two right here and then let them pair together and then hit create. And then I might do another bigger one right here. So select that one of the bride and her mom and then create. And then maybe I do this one, a close up and a further back one, and get rid of that one and then hit create. And then maybe I do, and then maybe I do this one, a closer up of the two of them together and again, create. And so I will just kind of work my way through a blog post this way. 
until I have enough that it feels like it tells the story of the day um, without being too overwhelming. So I'll do that one. Maybe I'll do a big one of the bridal party right there. Maybe I'll do one of the girls and a close up like that. Hit create. Um, and then I'm just going to end my blog post because I don't want to make this video too long with this one right here. So then I'll hit create. And so what it's done now is it's taken all of those images that I selected and it added them to a folder. If you don't have a lot of images that you're going to be putting in into your blog posts, you can also use something like Photoshop to size your images. So to do that, I'm going to open up an image in Photoshop and I like to go up to file and then save for web. So file export, save for web. And I want this to be a JPEG. I want this to be probably a quality of 57. Um, and I'm going to change the width to be a thousand pixels wide. That's kind of like a thousand to 1400 is a good rule of thumb kind of for uploading images on your website because it's going to ensure that they have a good quality, especially for retina devices, but that they're not so big that they load your slow down your site. Um, and so I can play with the quality here if I want. I'm probably going to stick with this for right now and then hit save. And so I'll export this and I would give it a keyword friendly name. So seasons, vineyard, wedding, Washington, DC. Um, and then if I was uploading multiple images and I knew that they were going to have the same name, I'd probably start adding like one, two, three, four on their site. So, um, I would hit save and then I'll show you another thing that I do to size images and optimize them for the web before uploading in a minute. So I'm going to come over to my website and I'll go to my dashboard and I'm going to add a new blog post and I'll come over to my blog post. So I'm going to start the blog post by giving it a name. And when I name them, I try to keep them search under friendly. So instead of saying Krista and Davy's wedding, I would say, so I, I'm going to make up a venue name seasons vineyard wedding in Washington DC. And if you go with vineyard name or even, and if you go with venue names and locations, your blog post names are also going to be more unique, which is important for search engines. Um, and if you want to get into search engine optimization, we have a, a course specifically around optimizing your content for search engines. And you can check that out at daviancrista.com. Next, I'm going to add a paragraph so I can just start typing here. Or if I've written a paragraph about the couple somewhere else, or just this is the meat of your blog post. So I'm going to paste this in here from a different wedding. Um, but you can kind of see if you take a look at this, that I talk about the couple. I talk about the day a little bit. I mentioned some of the other vendors that we worked with. So you really don't have to write a lot to get a blog post that hits that 300 word mark that search engines kind of look for and encourages your post to get indexed. The text editor has a lot of different things that you can do. So if we wanted to link to these specific vendors, I could select the text, put in the URL here. So start typing in, I don't actually know her URL off the top of my head. So I'm just going to put in Google, but I can put in Google. I'd probably set it to open in a new tab and then hit enter. You can bold, italicize. There are more inline settings here. Um, there are options to copy and paste. Sometimes if I paste something in, I'll notice it brings in different formatting. So sometimes I'll convert it to edit in HTML and just make sure that you don't see any like tags that say style. Um, in general, you want them. This one's a little funky because it has all the links, but you want them to be pretty straightforward. So. Um, a typical sentence should just look like this where it has that paragraph there. Um, and then if you don't want to edit as HTML, you can go back to edit visually. I'll make this one edit visually as well. You can add in images, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Galleries, which I don't actually use because I think it's better to showcase images individually. Um, it makes them a little more Pinterest friendly. You could do headings. There's all, There's more options in here. 
um, a, a common one is headings. So if you click heading right here, you can select whether it's H2, 3, 4, 5. And then the styles from these are often going to come from the theme of your website. So if you're in show it, they'll pull from like your show it settings. You could override them with CSS, but that's kind of a lot. Um, and same with WordPress Elementor, although in WordPress Elementor, you have a little more control over what each heading looks like. So you can just paste in a link from YouTube or Vimeo and it's going to pull in the Vimeo video. And then you can also add a video this way by clicking on this video option right here. And, um, you could upload it if you wanted to, although typically I would embed one from a video sharing site because it's going to help your site load faster. If you were to upload a big video right to your site, it's really going to start slowing down your site. Um, and then if you look in here, there are all sorts of other things that you can do that I'm not going to go over in here, but separators, page breaks, buttons, columns, um, you can get into widgets. So there's a lot that you can do in your editor um, to really enhance your blog posts. I, however, I'm going to delete this and then delete this block. When I'm ready to upload images, after I've blog stomped them, I like to run them through this software called Tiny PNG. So I would come in here and I would open up all of my images that I sized. And then I think it does 10 images or it does up to 20 images at a time. It's going to take these images that I already had stomped down to be a certain size. And you can see that it's going to reduce the sizes even more. And once it's done with that, I can download them and then open up the file right here. And these are going to be the ones that I actually upload to my website. And this isn't a SEO specific video, but I'm going to add that. I did not rename these images because they're just demo images, but if I was actually uploading them to my website, I would click on them and then click rename. And I would put in something like here, like I have here, Washington DC wedding, chapel winery, um, instead of naming them with the couple's names because Google can actually read the names in your image files and that could help you with searches. So. I'm going to rename them, let them keep their numbers. And then these are the files that I'm going to come back and upload to my website. So I'll come back here. I'll click this little plus sign. I'm going to click on image and I'm going to select my first image. And ideally you want to add alt text for it, each image. Alt text is something that search engines can read. And it also helps people who are visually impaired understand what they're seeing. So I might say something like bride getting ready for washing DC winery wedding. Um, in an ideal world, you'd also have a specific alt text for each image, but, it, but sometimes if I'm just uploading a ton of images, I'll do the same alt text for each one and keep it more specific to the, the wedding. So instead of getting specific for bride getting ready, I would do something like fall wedding at Seasons Vineyard, Washington, DC. Um, and then that text also gets pulled by Pinterest, which is good for Pinterest searches. So I, and now that I have one image loaded, I'm just going to keep going. So upload my second image. I would click on it and add my alt text. Um, you could add captions too, if you want. This is the last one I'm going to do. So third image. And then I would just keep adding as many images as I need. You can also add text in between images. You can drag and select your blocks. You can also drag and select elements to rearrange them, or you could click on this little move up to move it up below. You can add other elements in between and so forth. And once I've added all my images, I'm going to start working on optimizing the post. So I'm going to come in here and right now it's going to be visible to everyone, which is probably ideal for a blog. You can set it to publish immediately, or you could set it to publish at a future date. So I could set this one to go live tomorrow. Um, and then once I hit schedule, it would go live at that time. You can get fancy with like reviews or sticking it to the top of the blog and so forth, but I normally don't do any of that. Um, if you have a site that shows who the author is, you can change who the author is. I normally just leave this page links to as default. You can edit the permalink. So a permalink is the URL of your blog post. And in an ideal world, it's going to include keywords. So 
This one is just pulling in from the title, which is great because it's a Seasons Vineyard Wedding in Washington, D.C. This might be a long, this title might be a little long. Um, I can check it against search engine statistics in a minute. Um, you want these titles to be readable. You want them to include include keywords, and you, but you don't want them to get to be more than like 70 characters, including like the full URL. So you can always check that here if this is getting too long. We could take out the specific name of the location. So we could do wedding in Washington, D.C. Or um, you can take out little words like and, the, at, and so forth too. And that would shorten it. I was at a category for my weddings. And so for this one, I would do Washington, D.C. weddings because you want specific categories, but you don't want so many categories that like some categories only have one post. Um, we dive a lot more into that in our SEO course, but for now, just know that you want to give your post categories, not too many categories, and you want your categories to be search engine friendly. When it comes to tags, you want to be careful not to add too many to your website. So they can be used for certain filtering on your website, but they also show up in search engines. So I tend to be very limited with them and just do um, specific tags for the location. So I might do Washington DC wedding. And I might, if I have several weddings at the same venue, I might actually put in the venue name here too, because then that page can possibly show up in search results. A featured image is the image that shows up on your blog page. So like right here, it looks like I just pulled my first one, but I actually want to replace this one. So it's a vertical because I think that's going to look better. So I'm going to select that one. The excerpt is what shows up right here. Oh, oh let me select right here. And by default, it's just going to pull the first two sentences from your blog post, but you could also put in your own excerpt. You can change whether you want to allow comments or comments with pingbacks and trackbacks. I normally just leave all of that on. Once I've done that, I am going to start optimizing the SEO of my blog post. So you would do that by adding a third party plugin. Our favorite plugin right now is this one, which is rank math, but you can also do SEO press or Yoast. And if you want to learn more about the different platforms, we have a YouTube video comparing the platforms. Um, so if you head to youtube.com slash JV and Krista, there's a comparison there. Um, but all of these editors are going to work a little bit differently. So you might want to check out your individual editor to figure out how to optimize these posts. But just know that this is a point in the blogging sequence where I would start working on my keywords and meta tags and the snippets and all of that. Um, and then if you come down here, there's a few different other things that you can edit. Once everything is optimized, you would either hit publish or schedule and then you're good to go.